Come on in here, you're the star. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what my children are studying to be, you know. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah. Maria, as a matter of fact, work. wasn't that a terrific party on Saturday? Huh? Did you have some food? I loved it. I loved the whole thing. I thought it was great. Miss Betty coming. You're not really going to have to squat down there like that, right? Can't we prop it up somehow for you? You sure? Okay? Okay? Boy, you must be some big shot, you know. Hmm? Boy, yeah. Hmm. I can't not, I, I want to be able to see the print people because they're... Jennings, will you get out of the way, please, Jennings? <laughs> huh? I can't see Humbert. Ah. No. Okay? No. No. Yes, sure. Oh, I know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, coming. I'm privileged to have the opportunity to nominate Vito J. Tatone to our state's highest court. Justice Tatone is a uh, distinguished jurist who is uniquely well qualified for the Court of Appeals in terms of character, temperament, professional aptitude, and experience. He'll bring to the court a solid record as a justice in our trial and appellate courts and a diverse experience as a private practitioner, a professor, a member of numerous committees that relate to the work of the court system. My selection of Justice Tatone follows a careful evaluation of the qualifications of the seven candidates proposed by the Commission on Judicial Nomination. As was the case with prior appointments, I personally reviewed the documentation provided by the Commission, representative opinions written by the nominees and detailed analyses of other opinions. This is the second time I've had the opportunity to review the record of Justice Tatone because this is the second time that his appointment has been urged by the Commission. And I can understand why they did it twice. Justice Tatone has spent 16 years earning a reputation as a distinguished jurist and is extraordinarily well qualified for the highest court of this state. He assumed judicial office as an elected justice of the Supreme Court in 1968. In December of 75, he was designated as an additional justice of the Appellate Division, Second Department. In December of 1977, he was named an associate justice of that court. Following his re-election to the Supreme Court, he was redesignated to the Appellate Division. Prior to his tenure on the bench, Justice Tatone was engaged in the private law practice for 12 years. He also served as associate counsel to the President Pro Tem of the New York State Senate. He currently serves as an adjunct professor of criminal justice at St. John's University. This is another appointment of which I am, I hope not, exceedingly proud. Um, if I had to point to a single area of my opportunity to serve as governor that I feel perhaps most comfortable with, uh, it would be the area of the Court of Appeals appointments, the system that has been designed for the selection of candidates I don't regard as perfect, as you know, 
but it has produced for me over the last three years or so uh, a number of opportunities to appoint extremely well-qualified individuals. I think we have seized those opportunities. I think that the Court of Appeals is on its way to being, again, one of the great courts in the uh, United States as it should be. We have a wonderful chief judge who proved once again yesterday his extraordinary capacity to lead. And with Justice Tatone's addition to the court as Judge Tatone, if he's confirmed as we expect him to be within the next 30 days, then we have made the court stronger still. By every available criterion, he is an excellent choice. As I noted twice, the nominating commission sent his name to us. He's earned his um, reputation, which is a uniformly excellent one. If you talk to the PJ, Milt Mullen, of his own court, he has nothing but uh, exceedingly high praise for Vito Tatone's work. I have an advantage. I know him not only from his opinions, not only from his reputation, but I know him, I guess, for over 30 years, from his days as a student, from his days as a practitioner. Indeed, he gave me my start in the practice of the law by affording me my first opportunity to perform as a lawyer, for which, as I recall, I was not adequately compensated. But that notwithstanding, uh, I've seen him, um, I've seen him from the beginning. I've seen him grow. I've seen him develop an enormous stature. It gives me a special personal uh, privilege as well as pride to, uh, to be able now to stand next to him and say that uh, I have nominated him to the Court of Appeals. Vito. Thank you, Governor Cuomo. I wish my mother were here. She would have believed that, and my father, of course, would have liked it. My father is an attorney for 60 years. I'm sure today he is a very proud person, as is my wife and my children, and all thankful to Governor Cuomo. I can just hope that I will be as good a judge as the governor thinks I will be, and I'm, I will work at it day and night. And I just want to thank him once again. There's not really much I can say except thank you, and, I, and short opinions sometimes are the best. Thank you. Thank you. Especially before confirmation. We have uh, <laughs> with us uh, two assembly people, uh, Eric uh, uh, Vitaliano and uh, Betty Connolly from uh, Staten Island, of course. And why don't you come up here so we can get a picture with, with all of us. Thank you. Hmm? Yeah, let's get a picture. Come on. Where's my camera? Where is, where's the New York Times camera guy? Where's Don Pollard of the New York Times? Where is he? Yeah, there he is. He's part of our entourage. He goes wherever we go. Okay? You can, you can, you, you can stick around and help him answer questions. Okay, anybody have any questions for the judge? Uh, well, how, yeah, how did you meet each other? He says he wasn't adequately compensated. The truth is, now that the statute of limitation is run, I don't think we paid him. <laughs> the name of the, I'll tell you what the name of the case was. The name of the case was 5606 Realty Corp against Fetters Quiggin. It was probably 1958. It was an argument I made in the Court of Appeals against Emanuel Sellers' firm. And the lawyer on the other side was a man by the name of Scheinberg. And the line I wrote that I won't forget is a certificate of occupancy. Certificate of occupancy is only the emblem of adherence to the, uh, to the uh, pertinent laws. Of course, we had won it in the trial court and also the appellate division. Did we win? No, we didn't. Did we, no, yes. we, did. Did we yes. win below? Yes. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yes. Wow. And well, I, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I remember about it very, very well. After we won, there was a motion to re-argue. Now, motions to re-argue are commonly made and never, uh, I, I should now say, seldom ever granted. And Vito, then Vito, before he was justice and now judge, Tatone called me and said, Mario, what is this motion for re-arguing? Because I had been a clerk in the court. And I said, forget about it. It's pro forma. We won. Send money. Uh, <laughs> And um, 
the motion for re-argument was granted. <laughs> and we had to go back and argue the case a second time. And then we won it a second time. And still, he didn't send me the check. I know, there was probably some reason. It probably was lost in the mail. Were you the same law firm? No. 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 So we were in the same room, not in the same, same class, class. <laughs> but we were in the same room. I was never in a class with Vito. He was always uh, kind I of. I was going to use that line. Yeah, too late. <laughs> Governor, did, I'm sorry, did you know each other at school? Yes. Yes, we did. Well, tell me about that a little bit. You know, we. Uh, tell you about it? Yeah. Not Mario too much. was not, not too much. Too much. I haven't been confirmed yet. Maybe I shouldn't talk about the governor. The governor was in my class, I'm proud to say, and I think he was the shining light of our class. Each one of us is now proud to say he was our classmate. Maybe not then, but today we are. We went, uh, we, we, had a, we had a wonderful, wonderful class, and uh, we had a lot of fun. And then Vito went into the practice. As a matter of fact, we both went to Staten Island. We both looked at Staten Island at the same time. Matilda and Peg, um, that was before we had a house. Vito decided uh, to, to move there from uh, Queens. Queens, because your yeah. father lived in my neighborhood, as a matter of fact. Uh, we decided to stay in Queens, or I decided to stay in Queens. Then Vito quickly made it to the Supreme Court. And Matilda said, see, I told you we should have gone to that. <laughs> Thank you. You may be a judge now instead of governor of the state. Uh, OK. Governor, one question. Reportedly, there's been a lot of concern in the Italo-American community that you name an Italo-American to this court. You've done that. I'm wondering if that had anything to do with your choice of the judge. No. Did not? No. Otherwise, I would have picked him the first time. He was an Italian-American <laughs> then, too. You know. Governor, I was talking to yes. about 5,000 doctors in your backyard talking about malpractice. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll come back to it, but I want to. Yesterday, Chief Judge Walker gave uh, outlined some reforms he'd like to see, and one of them involved the Court of Appeals, giving the Court of Appeals more power to decide which appeals it would hear. And I suppose it would, they would uh, then not hear some appeals that they wouldn't think would be significant. Do you think the Court of Appeals should have more say in what indeed they hear? That what cases they hear? For you, Judge. Well, I, I, in fairness to the judge, if he's going to have to face a hearing and confirmation. I think you know we, we ought to give him the fullest opportunity to prepare, prepare for that and prefer you not ask him that kind of question now. I hope you don't take any offense, but he has to be prepared for confirmation. That's precisely the kind of thing they'll go into at the confirmation. I think you should let the Senate uh, be the first ones to address those questions to him. I hope you don't mind. Uh, as for me, I'm in favor of shrinking the uh, the. Uh, of right jurisdiction to the Court of Appeals. I'm in favor of reducing the burden on the Court of Appeals. I have been for a long, long time. I've written on it for a long time. I've supported it. I support it uh, again now that the Chief Judge um, has advanced the idea. I think yesterday was another brilliant performance by Judge Wachla, vindicating everything I knew he would be as Chief Judge. I've told him that. I've spoken to him about it to tell him how proud I was that uh, my appointee as chief judge should so quickly establish the eminence of, uh, of his role as I knew he would. So it was a terrific, I suggested to him that it be made a regular, a regular thing if the legislative leaders concur. I don't know that it needs to be every year, but they, he ought to come before the legislature of the state regularly to report on the judiciary. Um, I'm very pleased uh, that he did it and did it so well. Okay. You said that with your appointments to the bench, you thought that the State Court of Appeals would once again become one of the most respected co state courts in the country. Was there a period of time when it lost prestige in the nation? Yeah, when, uh, when I and Fabian left as clerks. Your answer to Mickey's question. Judge Tatone graduated about how he hired you. If you guys graduated from the same class, how he gave you your first no. job. Yeah, what about it? Well, how did that happen? He called up, says, you want to handle an appeal. I said, are you kidding? I have nothing else to do. I don't have a single job, nothing. Yes, I'll take it. Was he, got a job he, did? No, he was a practicing <laughs> lawyer. He was a practicing lawyer at an office with his father. He practiced. They were doing very well. My father, as I said, is an attorney. I didn't come. He hired me as an ind. He hired me as an independent contractor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, no, I didn't hire him. No, 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 I was, no I, was, I was out of the Court of Appeals already. I was he had already left the Court of Appeals. 
was my first appeal as a practitioner. First one, and it, it was in the Court of Appeals. Were you on or were you... Uh, I was Mario Cuomo. Uh, Mario Cuomo hanging out a shingle broke. by yourself? Yes, <laughs> very, very broke. We did it for Matilda, really. That was my first case, yes. Not the same class. We were in the same room together. <laughs> it's a pun. Right Sorry, <laughs> they don't understand. Okay. Governor, <laughs> follow up on Dick's question. You expressed um, some disappointment with the list the last time that there were no Italians on it. Are you pleased that no, you're no, 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 no. I said uh, I, each time I said there wasn't enough diversity. I thought, yeah, and. Uh, one of the groups that you mentioned. Yes. You wanted to see represented. Yeah, women, minorities. I still feel that way. I, I like lists that have diversity. I mean, we have abundant quality along with diversity. They can exist in the same world in this thing. We have them. We have brilliant women, brilliant blacks, brilliant Hispanics, and I was surprised that they weren't able to find any. Uh, well, yes? How can that not be a factor in your decision? Just because I have diversity doesn't mean I choose by race or sex, or color. I want the diversity, sure. The way you choose is by quality. And if you give me diversity, then in the natural course of events, the quality will be diversified. That's all. Just give me quality, but make it diverse. When you start picking by ethnic group, or sex, or race, then you depart from quality. I wouldn't do that. And the short answer, one, once again, is there was no Italian on the court when Vito's name first came before us. Excuse me. How old are you? Unless you're going to suggest I selected Judge Simons because he was an upstate wasp. I didn't Which hear. I didn't hear anybody suggest that, but it, the logic would be the same there, right? Was the fact that he was an upstate, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Republican relevant? Sure, we needed a wasp Republican. I mean, uh, yeah. How old are you? I'm 55. It's in the release. Is it? No. The judge should pay. 87.5. Governor, you've appointed now the majority of the members of the court, assuming that uh, Justice yes. Tatone is confirmed. What do you feel that has done to the court? I mean, what sort of stamp do you see ha yourself having put on I don't, the court? Mark, I don't think, um, you see, and again, uh, I, I don't want to get into the area that the, the confirmation may cover. There is a vast difference between the way I use my appointment power and it is used at the federal level by some presidents, this one included. Um, this president believes, and it was confirmed once again by his attorney general this last week, that the way you select judges for the court is partly, if not dominantly, on the basis of political philosophy. You ask them, how do you feel about abortion? That is the last thing I would do with a candidate for the Court of Appeals, is ask Vito Tatone how he would decide a specific case. I regard that as a total contradiction of what the court is supposed to be. The court is supposed to be made up of judges who come to every case virgin and decide that case on the facts before them. Yes, they consider the precedents and, and whether or not uh, the precedents ought to continue or whether they ought to be changed. But if they came to a case with a predisposition as to what you do in the case of abortion or a murder one or the death penalty or anything else, then they wouldn't be doing what a judge is supposed to do, which is to make a judgment not the way a legislature does in the abstract and generically and prospectively, but on this particular set of facts. Not on the principle, but this woman and this man in this matrimonial situation. That's the way you decide the case. And any judge who says, well, given that category of cases, I'm inclined to go to the right or to the left or up or down or severe, that's not the way the court should work. So, when I selected Wachtla, Simons, Republicans, Alexander, Kay, Democrats, it wasn't because, I don't even know if Kay is a Democrat. I'm not sure she was anything. Uh, at the, because at the time I appointed her, I didn't know, frankly. Um, 
but it, it had nothing to do with their philosophies. It had to do with the excellence with which they decided cases. Did they, their decisions appear to have integrity? Did they have intelligence? Were they well written? Because communication is an important part of the appellate function. You have to write the opinion so that lawyers understand it. Um, but not their specific point of view. With all the work that Jerry Crotty does, you know, in gathering up the information, and Larry Curland and Fabian Palomino, we don't do outlines as where might they come out uh, if it became a question, for example, of the executive power of the governor vis-a-vis -vis the legislature. What if the legislature decided that there should be 1,500 people in the mental retardation budget? Betty Connolly's here. Uh, you know, and it got to be a struggle between us. How would Vito decide that case? Would he be for Betty or for me? We don't. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. We we didn't go at it that way. Therefore, as to the five people on the bench, I am not seeking to create an impact that defines them philosophically. This is a uh, liberal court or a progressive court or a conservative court. I want an excellent court, a court of intelligent people who are hardworking, who bring their intelligence and their commitment to every case who decide the cases clearly, who write the opinions clearly, who give the bar direction, who give it some leadership, who give the law leadership. You see, the court directs the flow of the law, and they can direct it toward humane purposes or not so humane purposes, toward uh, confusion, toward predictability. Um, so well, what, yeah. Didn't have an intent to do that. Have you detected any shift in the court no, since you've begun making? No, and I, you know, to be fair, there, I'd have to do what I used to do, which is read all the advance sheets. The advance sheets are the cases that come down in their preliminary form before they're bound into those volumes you find on the shelves. They're called advance sheets. And when you're practicing, what you do and what the judges do is read those things regularly. And as as you read them regularly, you're you're uh, au courant with what's happening, and you can make judgments as to whether they're moving to the right, moving to the left, whether they seem to be tougher on uh, criminal matters, etc. So I, I, can't, I can't honestly say that I've detected any flow. What I have noticed from the cases I've read of the, be of the judges that I've appointed, they have been very quick to win respect. I know lawyers who have argued before them have come back and told me and complimented me for the excellence of the people we selected. So the reports I get are that they're performing well. And when they don't perform well, you'll hear about that too. On, on not ideologically, but just your overall impression, you read Judge Tatone's opinions, I gather. Characterize them. You know, what impressed you about them? Uh, In a word, sound. Sound. Uh, anything more or that just? No, sound. You can't do much better than sound. Judge, uh, excuse me, uh, Governor. Uh, they're, they're, he writes well, too. There are opinions that are good and sound, and opinions that sound good. <laughs> Don't use that at the confirmation. No. <laughs> no. Judge Tatone has confirmed that'll mean that uh, five of the members of that court are from the metropolitan area. Are you concerned uh, that there isn't enough uh, uh, upstate? Simons well, is upstate. Yeah, you've got but that's two, two irrelevant. From upstate. That's what I'm saying. Oh, 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 not, you mean not the five I picked? No, no, oh, oh. the court as a whole. Uh, is, that, uh, is that a matter of concern to you? I mean, will you be looking for an upstater next time? No, I, I, it's not done that way. I mean, I... Well, the state is pretty big. Uh, upstate does, deserves what, what some representation, doesn't it? What is the relevance of the it? geography? Huh? What's the relevance that you mean the law is different in Buffalo? I don't think so, Dick. I really don't. I don't think it's done that way. Um, I'm trying to think of the court we were on. Uh, Al Conway, Chief Judge, Brooklyn. Um, Stanley Fold, uh, New York City. Um, Marvin Dye, Rochester. John Van Voorhees, Irondequoit. Dye, Irondequoit, um, Van Voorhees, Rochester. Adrian Burke, the Bronx. Um, who else? Who did I miss? Charlie Desmond, Desmond Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, no, it's. You know, I, I certainly wouldn't rule anybody out because they're from upstate, but I wouldn't rule them in because they're from upstate either. I, you don't need that kind of geography. It would be nice if it occurs. I wouldn't object to it. Are you enrolled in a political party? Am I enrolled? Yeah. Yes, I am. Democratic Party. You don't do anything political. You're not allowed to, are you, as a judge? 
No wonder I never heard from you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll say. Okay. Good. Nita. DWI bill. Yep. Okay. What are we going to get for tax return? You want my tax return? What do you want to know about? I'll tell you right now. It's a very simple one. It's there, I think, isn't it? Isn't it available? Marty? Why do they have my tax return? Do they want it? Uh, no. Uh, I've been telling them any day now. Well, yes. Make it available. Yes. There's nothing in it. Just don't let them run around with it. Let them come to the office and look at it. Do uh, that's what we did every we do every year I think. There was a DWI bill in the legislature that would uh, not allow uh, a person convicted of uh, DWI who was injured in an accident to collect damages uh, in a in a, a lawsuit. 